Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good evening. I'm happy to be uh, here with you today in this short course about BICU basics. Uh, this lecture we will imagine today, everyone will imagine he's on call today in BICU for the first time. What are the expected problems sister will call you to come and assess and manage? Uh, we will have short talk about some problems. Uh, the first respiratory issue, uh, causes of desaturation of mechanical ventilation, uh, what are causes expected, how to manage, cardiovascular problems, pulse abnormalities, blood pressure abnormalities, CNS problems like raised intracranial pressure, suspected brain herniation, and fluid balance. I would like to make it interactive, so in case of question, you can uh, write your answers in chat, please. Sometimes non pediatrician are joining our course, so uh, he should know that he should uh, know that uh, children are not uh, like adults. Uh, there is uh, a range of uh, physio physiological uh, variables according to the age. So uh, heart rate 70 may be normal for adult for adolescent, but we will consider it bradycardia for new needs. So please have this card with you and your BICU shift. This is our monitor in ICU. You will find, you will find here uh, five vital signs. The heart rate, saturation, respiratory rate, blood pressure, and temperature. And uh, we are uh, doing, the, we are writing here the upper and lower limit, uh, adjusting the alarm of monitor, and it will help us in assessment of the patient. If you find here uh, ECG strip 2, it will help us in assessment of the rhythm. In case of cardiac arrest, shockable or not shockable. In cases of tachyarrhythmia, it's a sinus or not sinus. And this, uh, this is pulse uh, volume, arterial wave, and uh, should be regular. If the patient is moving, for example, uh, this wave will be bizarre shaped or irregular and will give a false number for saturation heart rate. Respiratory rate, usually we are count, uh, counting it in one minute because children, especially below one year, may have periodic breathing. At some time, you will find him tachypnic. Sometime you, will you may find him bradypnic. So uh, please count it in full one minute. And then blood pressure. We all know that uh, COVID-19 is hitting us very hard. And now we will imagine that you were pushed to work in BICU. You are uh, in the first night and the sister is calling you. Please, doctor, come. Room one, maintained on mechanical ventilation and desaturating down to 80. So what do you expect? What are causes expected and how to manage? Dope, excellent. Okay, excellent answers. If we have desaturation or mechanical ventilation first, ensure it's a true desaturation. Check waves on the monitor. As we said before, it's regular waves. The patient is not moving. Check the patient for cyanosis. And usually, experienced sister will not call you for if the patient is moving. If the patient has progressive desaturation, you should be uh, logic. You can think starting from the ventilator, connection, maybe problem with endotracheal tube, patient airway, patient lung, or pleura. So uh, if you have desaturation now, the first step, remove connection and connect AMBO back to ATT, do AMBO back. If the patient improves, in, uh, on mild pressure, so it may be problem in ventilator or connections. So check connections and connect this lung to the ventilator and uh, you may do recalibration or even change machine. If you are doing AMBO bag and patient saturation is still not improving, the system may uh, do suction. 
the ATT may be obstructed by secretion or blood clot. If it is the cause, the saturation will improve. Sometimes the tube may be displaced into right main bronchus. You will find a good air entry over the right side, diminished over the left side. Check fixation of the ATT. Usually after intubation, the sister are writing in flu sheet ATT for cuff fixed at 10 centimeters, for example. If it is 13, 14, uh, maybe pushed in during a care by uh, mistake, so you can pull it out. During ammo bag, if you find absence of chest rise and no uh, breast sound over the chest and there is abdominal distension, so that you may be displaced into esophagus, so you need to remove the uh, bag and the mask of ventilation and prepare for reintubation. Sometimes the patient may have sedation problems. The patient is moving too much and uh, fighting the machine, so you will give him bolus sedation, for example, bolus midazolam, fentanyl, and you can increase the baseline maintenance doses or add another sedative uh, drug. Patient with hyperactive airway or bronchial asthma may develop severe spasm during care by sister or uh, due to chest uh, infection. At this time, you will give bolus sedation and give bronchodilator measures. Pneumothorax, you will suspect it clinically. Surely you will ask for X-ray, but don't wait because uh, it's an emergency. You may lose your patient. So if you are suspecting pneumothorax, you will find bulging one side, diminish their entry over the affected side. You can do trial aspiration. You will enter by a needle into the right, into sorry, into the affected side, uh, the second intercostal space, midclavicular line. And saturation will improve if there is air coming with you, and then you can prepare chest tube. And we can abbreviate it as DOPS, as you see. But you can arrange it from ventilator, connections, ATT tube, patient airway, and patient lung. Now you can go back to sleep, but five minutes later, sister is calling you again, and uh, Doctor, there is two years old patient, room two, and his heart is going up, 160, 170, and uh, what do you expect? What is the cause of tachycardia and BICU, and how can you manage? disappeared for me. Okay, so Dr. Wahda, we have fever, pain, shock, convulsion, arrhythmias, uh, drug-induced, and anxiety and fear, uh, fever and fear. Okay. All are right answers. <laughs> so if you have tachycardia, what is uh, meant by tachycardia? Tachycardia means that heart rate is above the upper limit according to the age. You need is different from adolescent from adult. So first ensure it's not arrhythmia, it's a sinus tachycardia. Sinus tachycardia means that every QRS complex is preceded by normal B wave. The second step, you should check for perfusion, capillary time, urine output, a disturbed conscious level, mottling, because the patient may have uh, septic shock, and this is uh, the most dangerous cause. So the most dangerous is septic shock. The patient may have uh, signs of sepsis, systemic inflammatory response syndrome. You will have uh, tachycardia and uh, fever, and tachycardia here will be out of proportion to the fever. Usually heart rate, as you know, increased by 10 uh, beats for, every, for each one degree rise in temperature. If it is out of proportion, maybe the patient has signs of sepsis or sometimes myocarditis. Shock, you will have impaired perfusion and patient, uh, the patient tachycardia will improve with boluses of normal saline and starting vasopressor drug. But there is very simple causes. Fever, uh, drug-related nebulizer, ventolin, adrenaline for upper airway obstruction, pain due to bilirubin, 
or cystidrin, for example, and will be relieved by paracetamol or fentanyl. Irritability due to mechanical ventilation and will give polar sedation and increase baseline dose. Other causes of sinus tachycardia, the hydration, uh, simply the patient uh, may be admitted, maintained on IV fluid, and we forgot to start feeding and he's hungry. Uh, sometimes significant anemia may cause persistent sinus tachycardia after exclusion of other causes. If we can see this uh, monitor, heart rate is 208. Uh, can you describe the rhythm here? It is sinus tachycardia. Uh, Dr. Wahba, I don't think we see the monitor yet. You can... I'm not sure if everyone else is seeing it. Dr. Wahba, do you hear me? Yes, yes, Dr. Ahmad. We don't see the monitor. Now we see the monitor. Okay. Oh, okay. It came late. <laughs> so we have answers. Most of them are saying SVT. Uh, as you know, SCPT mostly uh, present with narrow complex tachycardia. If you can see here that QRS complex is wide and there is absent B wave. So this is wide complex tachycardia, mostly VTAC, not SCVT. If we look to the second image, you will find narrow complex and there is absent B wave and uh, mostly this is supraventricular tachycardia. But usually heart rate is uh, more than 175 in children. This monitor is from adult ICU. Usually be concerned if heart rate is more than 180 in children, more than 200 in infant blue one year. This is a very busy night and the sister is calling you uh, because uh, room three heart rate is 50 going down. So uh, what is the most common causes for bradycardia and ICU? So we have uh, questions about arrest, hypothermia, uh, patient is just asleep, or pre-arrest. Okay. Deep sedation, hypoglycemia. Okay. Sinus bradycardia means that heart rate is below the lower limit according to age. As we said before, uh, 80 is bradycardic uh, heart rate for neonate, but it's normal for adolescent. So check as uh, a normal heart rate according to age. If there is bradycardia, Check perfusion and a patient pulse. If it is symptomatic bradycardia, the patient may be developing uh, signs of septic shock. If the heart rate is below 60 and perfusion is impaired, you should do resuscitation according to the pulse approach. You will open the airway, you will give oxygen, assisted breathing, you may do CBR and give adrenaline. If heart rate below 60 and patient is having poor perfusion, if not heart rate below 60, above 60, but the patient uh, perfusion is impaired, uh, this is preterminal sign and the patient may go into uh, a complete arrest. The patient may have septic shock and they need immediate management. So sinus bradycardia may be a very simple cause like over sedation, and you will hold sedation for a short time and then resume it if still needed in lower doses. Vigor stimulation, sister is doing a prolonged deep suction, or you are doing intubation. Uh, usually, it will uh, improve by itself. If it is persistent, you can give atropine, if not self-limited. If you are doing intubation, stop your trial and improve your oxygenation. But the most dangerous, hypoxia, because it's a pre-terminal sign. This patient will have complete cardiac arrest in few seconds. 
as we said before, improve ox oxygenation, open airway, uh, bag and mask ventilation, EC clamp, uh, prepare for intubation, and uh, do CPR and give adrenaline. Raise the intracranial pressure. It may be a part of Cushing triad, bradycardia, uh, high blood pressure, and irregular respiration. And we need immediate measures according to the raise the intracranial pressure lecture uh, after a few minutes. Uh, simply, the patient may be sleeping only. Uh, we saw some coronic patient. We had one patient with cardiomyopathy, and uh, while sleeping, her heart rate is going down till 45, but she is well perfused. And her record uh, uh, available and written that heart rate is accepted till 40. Sometimes it's drug related, like the joxin, beta blocker, amidrone. So either you accept this heart rate or adjust the dose according to cardiac consultation. So take care that sinus bradycardia may be very simple uh, cause and maybe pre terminal sign. Then we'll go to hypotension. As defined by Dr. Osman in the previous lecture, uh, in unit less than 60, infant less than one year, less than 70, and the children more than one year, we'll use the equation uh, double the age and we'll add 70. If you have hypotension, patient with hypotension, check his perfusion because hypotension is pre terminal sign. Don't wait for uh, shock the patient to be hypotensive because now there is failure of all compensatory mechanism and the patient uh, may have arrest in few seconds. If the patient perfusion is impaired, give bolus normal saline, start uh, vasopressor drug according to previous lecture. Uh, sometimes the patient is well perfused and uh, the patient is only over sedated or you are giving a drug like beta blocker or ventolin infusion and then you can hold for some time and then adjust the dose and resume if still needed. But take care of uh, shock because it's a pre-terminal science. And here we can revise the pre-terminal science. Pre-terminal science and respiration, uh, bradypnea, gasping, and cardiovascular, uh, bradycardia, hypotension, skin, uh, cyanosis. These are all pre-terminal science, and the patient may be lost in seconds. You, and the patient need immediate intervention. Oxygen, open the, the airway, IV access, bolus saline, Hypertension. The most common cause of hypertension in ICU drug-related steroid we are using for uh, schistic cases like bronchial asthma, uh, nebulizer adrenaline for upper airway obstruction. Maybe the patient is not sedated well on mechanical ventilation. We need to give him bolus sedation and increase the dose. Sometimes you have patients admitted by pneumonia, he's improving but he was kept on sedation for a long time, more than five days and high doses. Now you are planning for extubation. You need to withdraw his sedation. During withdrawal uh, journey, the patient may have sedation withdrawal symptoms. May have tachycardia, hypertension, tremors, agitation. So you need to uh, adjust your uh, withdrawal plan. You need to stop and go back to higher doses and they make it slower. And sedation will uh, be explained by Dr. Osman in the next lecture. There is the intracranial pressure because Raised intracranial pressure, like cases of with hypertensive encephalopathy, uh, will start labetalol in severe cases. Avoid hydralazine because it's uh, uh, vasodilator. It will increase cerebral blood flow and will increase intracranial tissue. Other causes: renal cardiac. If you are using a steroid for chest uh, condition and you need it, so you can give IV hydralazine 0.1 to 0.3 mg per kg four hourly if systolic blood pressure above 99 percentile and define it for system, for example, above 100, 110, according to the age. Next topic is fluid balance. 
Float balance usually it's not a very important topic in the world. But in the ICU, uh, it's very important because it gives us rough indicator about volume status. In our ICU, nurses every four hours are calculating a fluid balance and at 6 a.m. in the morning before they go home, they calculate uh, the net balance of previous day. It equals input minus output. Input includes all bolus medication, feeding, continuous infusion, including IV fluid, sedation, vasopressor, output, urine, stool, and any losses, vomiting, lower fluid drain. So if you have uh, oligoria, patient has oligoria or excessive fluid intake, we will have positive balance. If the patient has too much losses, polyuria, diarrhea, vomiting, we will have negative balance. Now we have a question. Do you want the patient in ICU to be positive balance or negative balance? I am waiting for your response. According to the case, yes. Cardiac negative, yes. Okay, according to the case, according to the diagnosis. Okay, excellent answers. More than 10 to 20 ml per kg is significant. If you have patient 10 kg, so 100 to 200 ml positive or negative may be significant. Sometimes you need an action according to disease you are treating. Sometimes you may do no action at all. Your target is negative balance in this condition. If you have cardiac patient with wet lung or impending failure, patient with pneumonia and has oxygenation problem, Acute respiratory distress syndrome. They are defining it as acute non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. It's wet lung. You need it to make it uh, dry before extubation to improve uh, possibility of uh, success of extubation. Keep dry lung. Cases of volume overload, as in cases with renal failure. How do we can uh, achieve negative balance in the morning? During your uh, examination and putting a plan for the patient, you can restrict fluid intake from the start. For example, make it 70, 80, and then you can follow uh, the balance. We can give IV Lasix, SOS, or regular. Sometimes we can start continuous infusion, 0.05 to 0.25 mg per kg per hour, mostly in cases with ARDS, because we need to follow uh, the balance strictly and make it on the negative side. Your target is positive balance in uh, shock the patient, as explained with Dr. Osman, uh, dehydration. If the patient has too much negative balance of previous days and urea may be increased, he may have subtle dehydration. So today I will allow him to be positive. I will not give Lesix. And then we'll move to some and neuro issues. We have now uh, one case, uh, DKA, 16 year, uh, admitted from casualty to our BICU. Uh, her batch was 7.01. She is receiving uh, IV fluid and insulin infusion. And uh, she was interactive, but suddenly uh, the sister uh, noticed she has reduced the level of conscious level and she called you. So, what do you think? What is the cause of? Uh, this abnormality and how to manage. Brain edema, okay. Any other cause? Check glucose, yes, excellent. So the first step now, you will check uh, random blood sugar for hypoglycemia. Uh, if blood sugar is low, you will stop insulin for a while and you will give dextrose bolus and then reassess. But the most dangerous cause is cerebral edema. Usually the patient will have first irritability, headache, and then may have reduced the level of conscious level. At this time, uh, do you need to do CT to confirm diagnosis? Yes, no, 
It's no. Okay. Yes, you will depend on your clinical data. There is no time to do CT. Uh, here, uh, brain diagnosis of brain edema is a clinical diagnosis, and all protocols suggest to have magnetol bedside in cases of DKE. If you are suspecting, you should give magnetol. So, in this patient, you will keep the head midline and uh, make it elevated 30 degree. You will give uh, magnetol and follow. Uh, uh, the improvement in conscious level. Any other measurement? Who will decrease the IV fluid? Who will decrease insulin? For example, if it is 0.1, we'll make it 0.05 because we need uh, glucose on uh, the higher side. We don't know, we need the sodium on the higher side. We need the blood osmolarity to reduce the cerebral edema. Yes, sometimes we are giving hypertonic saline boluses with manitol. Sometimes you are starting continuous infusion of hypertonic saline. Yes, very good answers. So check blood sugar and then treat as brain edema. Okay. The next topic is about raised intercanal pressure. Uh, this is suspected in case with traumatic brain injury, hemorrhage, hematoma, CNS tumor, uh, metabolic disease, DKA, hypernatremia, sometimes causing cerebral edema, meningitis, encephalitis, abscess, HIE. You will do physical examination, you will evaluate for signs of Cushing triad, as we said before, because it may indicate impending herniation. You will do full neurologic examination, especially the conscious level, for bulging fontanel global response. The management of, of intracranial, raised intracranial pressure is like management of any critical patient. So you will do ABC. Sometimes you may need to do rapid, rapid sequence intubation in special cases. If you have patient with suspected herniation, if glaucoma score is rapidly deteriorating, decreasing more than three if it is uh, 14 and then suddenly became 10 for example this needs intubation or from the start glaucoma score is eight or below, below eight if the patient lost his airway protective reflexes you need to secure his airway by into tracheal tube if the patient has hypoventilation and other causes of intubation we need to keep his CO2 between 4.5 and 5.5 kilopascal, which equals 35 to 40 millimeter mercury, which is called controlled ventilation. Because high CO2 will vasodilate uh, brain vessels, will increase blood flow to the brain, and will increase intracranial pressure. And the low CO2 will vasoconstrict the blood vessels and will cause cerebral ischemia. We need brain to be well oxygenated, so keep saturation 99 to 100, and keep high normal blood pressure, as we explained before, to maintain normal cerebral perfusion. Sometimes even with normal blood pressure, we can add adrenaline infusion to keep it on the high normal side. If we are doing rapid sequence intubation, we should avoid ketamine and succinylcholine. We can use midazolam 0.1 mg per G for sedation and the chromium 1 mg per kg and the rapid sequence intubation as explained yesterday by Dr. Uh, Rehab we will give concurrent administration of sedation and muscle paralysis in, in, uh, in ER cases or on in, uh, in emergency cases. A uh, patient is not fasting and they maybe have, may have full stomach and especially in raised intracranial pressure uh, we should limit the trials because trials will uh, uh, increase intracranial pressure. So the most expert should intubate this child, and better to give muscle relaxant from the start to avoid fighting. This patient needs a close monitoring of conscious level and pupil hourly for early recognition of herniation to avoid brain stimulus. Good sedation makes the patient relaxed to avoid increase in intracranial pressure. Avoid giving ketamine. Uh, prophylactic anticonvulsant may be started phenytoin loading dose in maintenance. If you have cerebral edema, we are giving dexamethasone, hyperosmolar therapy, manitol, or hypertonic saline, as explained before, 
Our target sodium is 155 to 160 for mannitol usually. Uh, the mannitol is osmotic diuretic, so it needs a normal kidney. So avoid in renal failure and avoid an active intracranial hemorrhage. We may use mannitol or hypertonic saline or both. General measures, keep head central and elevated third degree, fluid restriction 70 to 80 if the patient is not hypovolemic or septic. If you are suspecting herniation, you can reduce to 50, eosermia, euglycemia, and they keep hemoglobin above 7. Now the last uh, issue, how to suspect impending herniation in patient with raised intracranial pressure. Sudden deterioration in conscious level and the brain stem reflexes. Gag and cough were present and now became absent. Development of Cushing triad. Signs of lateralization and equal pupil or a sudden hemiparesis. This respiratory rigidity, respiratory or cardiac arrest, so at this time, you will intubate the patient if not intubated. You will reduce IV fluid, will give magnetol, hypertonic saline, uh, optimize head position, and control the CO2, normal CO2, and the normal blood pressure. We can see in this image here on the right, uncus herniation and comparison of vital centers in brain. And uh, on the left side up, you will find unequal uh, pupil. This was the last topic in our uh, presentation. Uh, I hope you got uh, some benefit from our lecture, and I'm waiting for your questions. Thank you.